Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Monica and I am the founder and creator of Girasol Vintage. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how I refinish this antique chest using Bundo to repair some pretty big gaps in the wood. I am also using Bear's Chalk Style Mineral Paint for the first time. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Okay you guys, so as you can see in this clip and then the next one, um, it does have some pretty bad damage, but it's okay, I'm going to be repairing all that with some Bondo. And because this is a piece that is really, really old, and as you can see, this has been painted over, I'm going to be testing for lead. My client told me that this belonged to her mother, so you know, I have to be careful in making sure that I'm not going to be exposing myself to any lead paint. And the instructions for this kit are very easy. I am going to be linking down all the products that I'm using for this transformation. But um, you can also get this kit in Home Depot and I think I paid about 20 bucks and it has three sticks. So you can use it on three different projects. Okay, so the instructions are actually very simple and you can just look at the instructions in the back of the packaging. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to squeeze and crush points A and B located on the barrel of the swap. And with the swap tip facing down, we're going to shake it twice and squeeze gently until the yellow liquid comes to the tip of the swap. While squeezing gently, we're going to rub the swab on the test area for 30 seconds. If the tip turns red or pink, lead is present. As you can see here, we have no red or pink, so we're good to go. Next, we're going to be filling in some of these cracks with some bundo. And as you can see, the one in the back is pretty bad. So it's probably going to take me a few coats of bundo and sanding in between to be able to um, fill them in to the point where the surface is nice and smooth. Um, in the inside, I've just placed some tape. That way, when I'm filling in the holes, no bundo is um, just going through the holes into the inside of the chest. Now I could probably just go straight into the Bondo, but I want to make sure that I give this piece the best chance of surviving for many more years to come. So I'm going to be using this needle that I got from Amazon and I'm going to be putting in some glue between these cracks. I'm going to lay it dry overnight and tomorrow, once it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my repairs with Bondo. This is a very easy process. As you can see here, I'm just putting some glue, some wood glue in my needle and then just squeezing it between the cracks. Just a quick disclaimer, you guys. I am not a professional. I am learning as I go. I just wanna be able to share what I do with you to encourage you to do it yourself. And I am trying to do it in a way where everyone's gonna be safe doing it. So if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, kindly put them in the uh, comments below. I love hearing from you guys and you adding your comments down below also helps my channel to continue growing. I'm going to go ahead and start prepping for bundle repairs and I'm also going to go ahead and just give my entire piece a good sanding. Now for this I'm using my orbital sander and I'm also using 120 grit sandpaper. I just want to make sure that I am allowing for my bundle to stick to the surface of my piece and um, so that I can go ahead and have as smooth as possible surface even though this is an old piece. After this I'm going to go ahead and give my piece a good clean and after that we're going to go ahead and start with the bundle repairs.
fill in the gaps and to do the repairs in my piece, I'm gonna be using this product called Bondo. Now, when you're doing this, please remember to protect your skin. You do not want any of these chemicals to uh, be absorbed by your skin. Um, it's also really stinky, so make sure that you're working outside or in a well-ventilated area. I'm going to go ahead and scoop a little bit of the um, gray paste onto a cardboard. And you don't want to put a lot of it, a lot of product, out um, because it's going to dry really fast and you might end up wasting too much of it. So you're going to have to work in parts. Now go ahead and take your hardener and add it to your gray paste. You're going to go ahead and mix it well. The more hardener you add to it, the faster it's going to dry. So if you're not quite sure or this is your first time using this product, go ahead and add a little bit um, at a time. Once you have it all mixed in, you're going to go ahead and head over to your piece and you're going to start filling in the gaps. I repeated the process three times and after that I went over it with my orbital sander just to smooth out any rough edges. I cleaned my piece one more time just before adding my primer and for my primer I just ended up using a water-based primer because I'm not worried about any bleed through. I'm only using primer just to make sure that I'm having the same texture all over my piece when I add my paint. I ended up doing two full coats of primer and I did sand in between with a 220 sandpaper just to make sure that I got rid of any texture left behind by my roller. Now for this week's project I'm going to be using the Bare Designer Collection Chalk Paint and I really hope that this works out because this can of paint was only 20 bucks. That's pretty good. If you're in the business of flipping furniture, 20 bucks for a can this size is really, really good. So I went ahead and poured a little bit of paint onto a separate container. This is gonna allow me to keep the rest of my paint from getting contaminated. I do like the consistency of the paint, so I'm not gonna be adding any water to it. However, I am going to have my mister in hand and I'm going to mist the surface before adding the paint. Thank you. 
So I'm pretty happy with this paint. It does have excellent coverage, but I still ended up doing two full coats and I sanded between each coat just to make sure that I'm getting rid of any unwanted texture. My client wanted to keep some of the original design, so I'm going to be painting the top and bottom trim in Dixie Belle's Vintage Dog Egg. I used some blue painter tape to help me keep straight lines, but unfortunately I lost the footage of me painting the trim in doing a light distress. Not sure why, but I'm not able to retrieve the footage for those two steps. Nevertheless, to do the distressing part, I used a 220 sandpaper and I just went lightly over the edges with it. And for those of you who like uh, or find tape removal satisfying, here's a little treat for you. I hope you enjoy it. To seal this piece, I'm going to use a clear wax from the brand Verithane. This is what it looks like, and I'm going to use a lint-free rag to work the wax into the piece. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit, and then I'm going to wipe it off before it dries. This wax, like most others, takes about a month to cure. So make sure that you're not putting anything on top of your piece for a whole month. Last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and freshen up the inside of my piece and for that I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter. Now this one specifically has a citrusy smell and basically what I want is for my client to realize that not only I have taken care of the piece in the outside but I've also done a little extra work on the inside. Before I show you the final result, I want to kindly ask everyone watching my video to please leave me a thumbs up and any questions or comments down below. All my new viewers, thank you so much for clicking on my video and I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around to see more content like this. Last but not least, thank you to all my returning subscribers. You guys are amazing and I love doing this for you. I hope you enjoy the final result and I'll see you guys next week for another furniture flip. Bye bye!
Thank you.